Hello, and welcome to the Infinite Love Podcast. This is a place where we share how love can transform negative emotions and pain into strength. We talk about all things related to love, positivity, and kindness. And I am your host, Corinne Kamara. Welcome to episode 17, From Chronic Pelvic Pain to Beehive. Today, we are going to talk to Hannah Madluck. She's the founder, producer, and host of The V-Hive and is a certified holistic health and wellness coach. The V-Hive was born as a result of her own challenges with chronic pelvic pain. After figuring out how to navigate these complicated issues, she realized how common they are and how infrequently they are discussed and was eager to bring these topics to the forefront. Hannah thrives on having open conversations about taboo topics that all women should have knowledge on and access to. In this episode, Hannah shares her pain journey and how she transformed it into a powerful community called the V-Hive. Please excuse the construction and the occasional noise from the streets of New York City. And let's get into today's episode. Hi, Hannah. Welcome to the Infinite Love Podcast. I am so excited to talk to you today. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm enjoying the day. It's beautiful here in California. So it's nice. Beautiful here in New York, too. So I'm enjoying it while it lasts before <laughs> winter and cold. Oh, yeah. Those winters, man. I don't miss I them. I know. <laughs> it's going to be a long one, but that's okay. Yeah. So we're going to start out talking about your story and what your love lesson is. And a love lesson is essentially a life situation that brought you to your knees that required some internal transformation. And in that transformation, you were able to gain insights and able to then take those experiences to help others transform as well. I love it. Thank you for doing this. It's great. The questions are great. The purpose is great. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so tell my, tell, start by telling my story. Okay. Um, well, I don't want to, um, I don't want to go on for too long because I, we all can about our own stories, but, um, basically I was diagnosed with pelvic pain a few years ago. And for anyone who is familiar, I'm sure a lot of people listening are familiar with pelvic pain, but if you're not, Um, It can be anything from vaginal pain, burning, itching, bladder, urgency, frequency. It can be so many different things. So I had a lot of overlapping symptoms. Like most people don't know what's wrong. A lot of doctors don't really diagnose you properly or at all. And it takes a lot of time and money and doctors to figure out what's wrong. And ultimately there's often nothing too serious wrong. Um, sometimes there is, but most often there really isn't. And so fast forward, you know, after about a year of trying to figure out what, what was going on with my body and what was causing the pain that I had, um, I finally had got this diagnosis of pelvic floor dysfunction and vulvodynia, um, and I was put on a lot of different medications from antidepressants to antibiotics. I went to pelvic floor physical therapy. I did acupuncture and massage. And I mean, I did so many different things. I tried, I tried what seemed to have been everything. And while a lot of the things did work, like I think that pelvic floor physical therapy was great for me. Um, it really did help. And if there's anything that you want me to explain in, in more detail, I'm happy to, but okay. for the sake of time, I'll just kind of go, go through the story. And um, if you want me to stop at any point, just let me know. Okay. But anyway, so a lot of these things were helpful and a, and a lot weren't. Um, and, you know, fast forward a year or two, I was much better. I, you know, I was able to live normally. I was able to do everything I wanted to do. I wasn't in pain, but it took a while. I was in really bad pain. I had vaginal burning and itching for a really long time. 
Um, but I did all of these things and I don't know necessarily if it was the pelvic floor physical therapy or the medications or whatever it was, I'm not sure, but a combination of lots of things mm -hmm. seemed to work after a long period of time. I also, I was living in um, Brooklyn in, in New York at the time and I moved back home to my parents and I got out of a really bad relationship and I was also doing things in my life to bring the stress down and to kind of just recenter myself. Um, and I started to feel better after a while and, you know, things were kind of going back to normal. Um, during that time, I started this, the V hive, uh, my podcast that I now host, which is, um, all about women's sexual health issues. And I just became really interested in it during this time and really passionate about it and realized how many women have these issues, but don't have the voice to talk about it, the education, the resources, the tools, um, the support, you know, whatever it is, they don't, they don't know how to get better. And it's something that a lot of us are really scared to talk about because it's an intimate part of our body. And right. that makes getting better harder as well, because it's not, you know, like neck pain, which neck pain isn't fun but it's easier to talk about than having pain in, in your most intimate part of your body um so i really wanted to like bring these resources to the forefront and to really help women know that they're not alone and and provide them with the education to get better um and one thing i want to add which i'm sure like will be weaved in more throughout this podcast but um it wasn't until recently, actually, until about when COVID started, I always thought that I was very like aware of, um, sorry, and I'll mention my grandma also had a lot of these, she had pelvic pain throughout her life. Um, and so to me, I had always heard about, she had interstitial cystitis, so I knew what, uh, I, I had heard of these things. My mom was familiar with them because this was my mom's mom. So these weren't, this wasn't like a new world to me. I mean, it was because it was, it was new to my body, but it, it was something that I had kind of grown up relatively familiar with. Um, but what I, what I wanted to say was that, you know, it was about when COVID started where I, so there's this amazing therapist named Nicole Sachs, um, and she does mind body medicine. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her work, but um, she's incredible. I highly recommend everyone listening and watching to look into her work. She does chronic, he, he, she has a course called um, Freedom from Chronic Pain. And she basically has, she has this amazing story of healing her own body from a spinal abnormality all through mind body medicine and emotional release work um, through a form of journaling and meditation like really deep excavation of, of repressed emotions and she trained under dr john sarno who was like the pioneer of mind body medicine and he was a doctor at nyu and he essentially believed that almost all chronic pain is repressed emotions whether it's anger fear yes. trauma sadness grief whatever it is mm -hmm. um and, you know, he was a doctor at NYU in New York and most doctors like completely frowned upon him and didn't think he was legitimate because they didn't believe in his work. But lo and behold, I mean, people, it works. It, people get better from it and it works. And um, so Nicole was a patient of his and now she, she healed and she's carrying on his message essentially. And I had her on the V Hive about maybe like over two years ago and she talked about her work and she said i mean she has a she has a podcast called the cure for chronic pain and she has a youtube channel and a website and all this stuff and she explained she has a program you can buy but she has so many free resources and so oh, nice. she explained her work and i was like wow that's so interesting but for me um the word trauma like didn't resonate because i was like i don't have trauma i, I grew up privileged and and i you know, I never was sexually abused. I had parents that loved me and that supported me and gave me everything I needed. And I don't have any bad, like traumatic memories, but I didn't realize that 
trauma isn't just sexual abuse right. or like, um, I mean, the big things, you know, the, the suicide, loss of a friend or like the trauma, we all experience trauma in our day-to-day -day lives. And it took me like literally a year to understand that. And I was like, like having chronic pain is trauma. Um, you know, getting in a fight with a best friend in sixth grade is trauma. Like there's all these forms of trauma that affect us that we just don't really have time to process it in our life, which right. I'm sure you know all about this. Right. Um, and then there's also the microaggressions. Like yeah. the, thing, the little things that people say all the time. I mean, living in New exactly. York, getting catcalled when you walk exactly. down the street, that's a microaggression, like things like 100%. that. hundred percent. Yeah. So basically I had her on the podcast. I understood the work and, and it took a year later for me to finally understand, like, there's something here. Although I feel great, I still have some bladder urgency and frequency. I still have fear around eating certain foods that I was told would trigger a symptom. I still have these fears. I'm still thinking about how I feel a lot. And I was like, I haven't really done the work. I've gone to all the doctors. I feel good enough, but like, I haven't really like done my own work. And, um, I bought her program on her website and actually, and um, I started doing, I started doing it every day. It's 20 minutes of writing and 10 minutes of meditation. And so it's 30 minutes a day. And, and it really forces you to like understand yourself much more. And it wasn't until then that I was like, I mean, I have a completely different outlook on chronic pain and treatments for chronic pain and the mind and the body and how they're connected. So that's what I'm really passionate about. And um, most recently, I'm going to actually go back to school in January to become a therapist. And, and I really want to, yeah, I'm excited. And so I really want to work one on one with women and be able to help them in a more intimate way. So congratulations. Thank that's you. amazing. Yeah, I love that you find you found something that you want to do within this process. That's what it's all about, really exactly yeah so, i just i love that so much i mean that's like you're just talking my my language because this is <laughs> what i this is what i live for is releasing these emotional blocks and wounds mm -hmm. that prevent us from living a full life because it could affect our health it could affect our mind as it definitely affects our spirit it's just un, undoing all those things that we have inside of ourselves is so important and i find that the pelvic floor which is why i I'm so passionate about the pelvic floor. So much gets stuck there. Yeah. It's just a basin of just, it's like a bowl. Things just get put in there, put in there, put in here. It's like a storehouse. Yeah. And exactly. I think it's so important for women to really start to understand the power of the wound space, but also the importance of releasing and detoxing totally. emotions. I mean, it's, and it's not always about food and it's not always about nutrition. It's not always about right supplements and all of that i mean you can do all of that and i definitely encourage all of that but yeah. it's also that emotional work that needs to get done very much so and you know i think that a lot of times like i mean i'm sure your audience is very into all of this and i know you are and but i think a lot of times with people who are in severe pain it comes across as like how dare you tell me that right. this is like coming from you know in my head and that's obviously not at all the premise of, of what this means, it's really just that like modern medicine and there's modern medicine is amazing. And, and I would never say like that there's, that, it, that it's bad, it's good, but there's a lot missing. And, and what's missing is like that our emotions are connected to the way that we feel. And when you go into a doctor's office, most of them aren't going to ask you that. And so we don't know really that that could be causing pain. And, and Nicole says all the time, I was literally just this morning listening to an Instagram live she did with um, Dr. Sonia Bellani. She's a pelvic pain oh, yeah. specialist. Yeah. 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 And so they did an Instagram live and, and she, Nicole, I've listened to Nicole speak so many times, but she always explains it the same way where she says like, if something sad happens, you cry and tears come out of your eyes. Or if you have to give a presentation, in school, you'll get a, you might get a stomach ache because you're nervous. Like 
our body responds to emotions in real physical ways. So if you're stressed about work or someone passes away or you're anxious about a relationship or, you know, whatever it is, you could get pelvic pain. But when you go to a doctor, they're not going to tell you that. And it takes you have, it takes your own kind of work and process and education to really understand that, which is what you do and which is really what I want to do. And um, I think you're it's doing really, it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I just think it's so important for women because I think, mm-hmm. yeah. One hundred percent. And you know, it's interesting because I have, a, I've had a client that had, that has severe pelvic pain and she's similar to you where she's never gotten abuse. Her family loves her. She has nothing that's shouting out abuse. And I was, kept telling her, I was like, you know, there's something in there that you need to start uncovering. But she was completely like unopened to it. Like she didn't mm-hmm. really want to go in there because yeah. she felt like nothing happened to me. Yeah. And I think what you're saying is so important. Like even if you're out there in chronic pain and you don't think anything major has happened to you, I would just start digging and asking questions and trying to find yeah. out like perhaps there's something that you haven't thought about that is actually affecting yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And we have the option, like we can just try and we can try to to like, to excavate our emotions and to to write what's making us feel the way that we feel. And it doesn't need to be like, you're so angry every day. I'm not really, I'm not an angry person, but there are days and moments and times where you have these emotions and Mm -hmm. you don't know how to let them out. And then, then you just forget about them because we have to carry on with our day and they can make us really sick. So it's it's really important. Right. And I think as women, we have a lot to be angry about. I mean, just the patriarchy alone is enough to like blow every anyone's mind open with anger because it's it's so intense. So there's a lot of things that we deal with all the time that we don't even realize it's hurting us or so many women are people pleasers and they want to say yes. And they give, give, give. There's so many things Mm -hmm. that I feel like if we all had a certain level of awareness about our emotional space, it would totally shift our whole health and how we feel about ourselves. I couldn't agree more. And a lot of it's subconscious also, you know, a lot of it, like for me, I walk, I, I would walk around. I remember when I really wasn't feeling well, I would go see this acupuncturist and I would be like, I'm not anxious. I'm not stressed. And like, it was all consciously, I was like, fine. I was functioning. I was doing everything. I looked well. And like, I, I was able to like show up and, and I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. But I wasn't, and I wasn't really processing it or like confronting it. I was just repressing it all. And, um, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I mean, I did that for years, especially like growing up in New York city. it, It was almost like I didn't, there was like no time to be emotional. Right. Like you just have to go, 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 go. And then I grew up in the family where it was like, why are you crying? Like, we yeah. don't, there's like no time for this. Like, what are you doing? Right. And so I just learned not to just, to just not deal. And, it and that's just, really common. Yeah, it really is. And it's detrimental because I had like chronic fatigue. I had all sorts of health yeah. issues that, you know, it's interesting when people have like diagnosable health issues it's a little bit easier, but when you have things that are just not diagnosable and all the tests are coming out normal, doctors are like, all your tests are normal. You should be fine. But then you still feel like crap every day. And that's what I find to be so challenging. Yeah. I can uh, relate. (laughs) Yeah. Cause doctors are like, you're fine. You're like, how could I be fine? This is not normal. I know. And that's the thing. That's actually, that's exactly, I mean, I keep referring to Nicole just because she, she explains everything so well. Yeah. And I just really deeply, like she, you know, there's a few, her and there's another doctor, Dr. Howard Schubiner, who um, does similar, I mean, he's, he's an MD, but he does similar work and he trained under Dr. John Sarno as well. Um, but, oh my God, no, I'm on, a text came through and I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> wait, what was I going to say? This was, we're talking about you... emotional um feeling normal when you feel do- normals and doctors are doctors oh are like, yeah okay exactly you're normal thank you mm-hmm. exactly so you know it's like it's not that like you should always go get your symptoms checked out you should go to a doctor you should make sure like for example i have a, i had a uti and like i, I was 
yesterday I went to the doctor and I was ignoring it because I was like, oh, like whatever, it's nothing. Like I always feel like I have to go to the bathroom. Um, but it was, it, I, have, I had a UTI, I, ha- I have to take antibiotics. Like there's just, there's just no way around that. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want to let a bladder infection go untreated. You'll get really sick. So there's certain things like you want to get your symptoms checked out, you know, but it's when things aren't coming. It's when the doctors are saying to you, everything seems fine. That's when I believe is the time where you then have to go inwards and say, you know, I, I, I'm nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong with my body. I'm healthy. Like I, 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 I'm a healthy person and things my blood work is fine. I don't have a tumor. I don't have cancer. You know, I, I'm, I'm healthy. So what's going, what else could be going on? And unfortunately that's when most doctors aren't going to say like, what's going on in your life. Right. And also there's that aspect of it. And there's also the, the, the person that goes from doctor to doctor, the doctor and goes from, from practitioner to practitioner mm-hmm. to practitioner. They're just yeah. kind of always going to the new thing to see who can fix me. And that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest things I tell my clients. I'm like, I'm an acupuncturist and a healer, but I'm not going to fix you. Like I'm helping open up doors of consciousness where you start to understand deeper levels of who you are and you heal yourself, you fix yourself. And I feel like that's also another issue with people that have chronic pain because they're always trying to go to, to find someone to fix them, to give them the magic pill, to do this. And it's like, doesn't work that way. You know, I see it a lot too. And it makes me sad because you're always get, you know, you could Google things a hundred different ways and you'll find different answers and you could go to a hundred different doctors and right. you'll all say something different. They'll all tell you to eat a different way or take a different supplement or get a different test. And like, unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't always work. So yeah. I agree. And then you just get confused and it makes the anxiety worse and the fear worse and you right. probably will just get more sick. Right. And I think that's the part that I'm just like, that's when you go inside yourself. That's when you start to build your intuition. That's when you start to believe, trust your gut. Like if a doctor's telling you, you should take something and it doesn't feel good to you. Think, think about it, have some yeah. options, talk to people, but really trust yourself because yeah. honestly, at the end of the day, nobody's going to know your body more than you. Yeah. Like we all have different insight and different ideas, but that's, I feel like building the intuition and having that conversation with your emotional space really makes a difference between somebody that can heal and somebody that's always dealing with symptoms. Yeah, completely. Yeah. So let's get into some of the infinite love questions. So how do you use love in your work? So, okay. Well, um, oh my God, these are all so... They're such powerful, big questions, but I love them. Um, No, I really do. Okay. How do I use love in my work? Well, I think that you have to, it's a choice, but like to a certain extent, it's not really a choice because the only way that you can make a difference is if you do what you do through love and um, there's love and there's fear. And and if you fear, if if you're fearful, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to make a difference. You're not going to be able to show up. You're not going to be able to do anything well. And you're not going to be able to be happy because you're just living in a state of fear. So if you can figure out ways to live in a state of love and to do that, do your work and like embody that person that you want to be, you will be successful, you know, at at whatever you do. I also think I'm fortunate that I do work that I really do actually love and and i find so interesting and and i i enjoy it so i think that that makes it so much easier which i'm really fortunate but i think that everyone can find something that they love doing and i think that if you find something that you love doing and you know it's not always easy it might take time but it's totally possible to find something that you love and that makes you feel but it makes you, you know, have a sense of purpose that you really feel like you're doing something that makes you feel good and helping people. And, um, and I think that when you find that you automatically are, it's coming from a place of love because the passion is there. Right. And people feel it and they resonate with it. People feel it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So how do you feel that your work is used to uplift humanity? 
I would say that, well, I, I definitely think that anyone who is in the healing, helping space is helping humanity, mm -hmm. big or small, you know, whether it's, whether you're Oprah or you're me, um, whether you're reaching, and I always say, um, and I'm sure, you know, you said this or feel this way, but even if my podcast helps one person, like even if one person listens to a certain episode and it resonates with them and right. they, they feel hopeful and they get better, whatever it does, like that's, that's all that really at the end of the day matters. And I think that for me, it's so rewarding to know that I'm just making a difference in people's lives. And some days I don't think about it or feel it, but other days I do. And um, to just keep reminding myself of that because it's like anything, sometimes you forget and you go through life and maybe you get bored one day or whatever it is. But at the end of the end of the day, at the end of the week, the month, the year, when, when you know that what you're doing is really changing people's lives, it makes you feel like you're helping the world. Yeah, absolutely. I totally resonate with that for sure. So what does it mean for you um, on a personal level to be a positive force uh, of goodness in the world? It means, and you know, this kind of relates closely to what we've just been talking about, but it means really, and again, this is something I'm realizing more and more now every day is to really show up for yourself first. And like, it's something that I've always struggled with because I'm a people pleaser and I always want to make everyone else happy. And I care so much about the people I love's happiness. And if some, you know, if this person's not happy, sometimes I'm not happy and I feel it and I want to fix it. And I think coming to terms with the fact that you can't do that. You just can't do that. And you can't live life that way because you'll never be happy. Mm -hmm. And really like, sorry, the construction, um, really showing up for yourself. And like, it's hard. Sometimes it's so hard because you want to be everywhere and do everything and, and show up for everyone else. But when you show up for everyone else, you can't show up for yourself. Right. Absolutely. So I think that if you can just, you know, do the things that really make you feel good and make you happy and just prioritizing yourself, then that will allow you to, to do everything else you want to do. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So what do you love most about your life? What do I love most about my life? I love the people in it. Um, I love, I really love the people in my life. I love my family, my parents and my siblings and my amazing boyfriend, who's the sweetest man in the world and my friends. And I think that the people in your life are so important. And um, when you have good people in your life, you realize the importance of it. And you realize that like, you know, everyone says surround yourself with good people. And, you know, and we've all heard that before, but I think that if you can like, if you really like set high standards for the people, and obviously you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends, you can choose your partner, you can choose, there's a lot of people you can choose. And I think that if you just really like set high standards for the people that you have in your life, because those are the people that are gonna like really, obviously you influence the way that you feel, but the people that you're with the most influence the way that you feel too. Absolutely. And um really important you know i and i've i've talked about this before and i mentioned it earlier but i at one point i had a boyfriend who like he wasn't a bad person but he wasn't a good person for me and it took me a really long time to realize that i think it made me sick it, I, like you know it was when i my pelvic pain began and being in like a bad relationship is when you're in something you don't see it because you're so in it but it's so important to like really check in and see how you're feeling and like getting the courage like mustering up the self-courage and the confidence to be like 
I know that I can be happier and like actually acting on it because it's so much easier to just be in a bad situation or a bad relationship. But like the way that it affects our life right. is not worth it. It really isn't. And I 100%, especially with romantic partners. Yeah. And it's interesting that it hits the vagina area because it at this point, I really feel like my vagina has its own intelligence. Because I've been in romantic situations where I get chronic yeast infections the Me whole too. time. The whole time. Me and the minute we break up, it, it goes away. That's what happened to me. And it's like, if this is, you can't make this up. Like right. we've been through it. We're not, you know, we're not saying like, right. this is real. The same thing happened to me for years. I was so sick. I was always getting yeast infections and bacterial vaginosis. And like, it was a disaster. Right. And I literally didn't even realize until years after the fact, like when COVID started, I don't know, like things were just kind of like weirdly happening. And I was, and I've been with my new boyfriend for a while now. But I was like, did I really start to get pelvic pain when I was with him? Like, what? How did I not realize this? Like, this is insane. Yeah. I haven't gotten one infection. This is my first UTI. And we've been together for almost two years. I have nothing else. Like, you know, I mean, your body's pretty smart. Yeah. So at this point, if the vagina is not happy, not doing it. Not doing it. Not doing it. Yeah, it's a huge, it's, it's cool. I think that's another thing. I think that we have to really also like start to look at things as like not, you know, as a society, as women, um, we have to look at things as, as more of like, these are signs. Like right. obviously it sucks to have a yeast infection or a UTI or whatever it is, but like if something happens and there's a difference between something happened once, some happening once and happening chronically chronically mm -hmm. and if it's a one-time thing if you get a uti once every few years like okay it's fine no big deal but if it's if you're getting yeast infections every time you have sex with someone that's like, a problem that's a problem and your body's telling you something and you could be mad about it that's fine but you listen to it you know mm -hmm. yeah no the vagina is like when we don't like this this energy <laughs> is not working and and also like i think intuitively in my case it was like I wasn't entirely open because I knew this relationship wasn't right for me, but I was kept it? pushing and I kept pushing me and too. my body was just like, you want to keep pushing? Here you go. We're going to keep pushing. <laughs> We're going to keep pushing until you wake <laughs> up to know that this is not somebody you want in your body, in your energy field. And yeah, yeah, it's, um, so I tell that to my patients all the time, like, listen to your vagina. She's smart. It's so <laughs> and it's a blessing. Like, like, you know, look at yourself as like lucky. You're so lucky that your body's sending you those signals. I didn't see it that way at all. I wanted to like literally rip my insides out. I was like, I'm so unlucky. This is horrible. Why me? Like, how could this possibly happen? But, and that's normal to feel that way when you don't feel well, but right. like, you know, I think as you go through it, you're able to then look at it in the lens of like, Thank you. Like, thank right. you. Tell me that if that happens ever again, like now I know I need to like reevaluate something. And also look at the path that you're on. Like you're going to become a therapist. You Now you're passionate about helping women. And I just don't, you know, if this experience didn't happen, you would not be where you are today. You wouldn't have the podcast. I mean, so ultimately it was a gift. And the same with you. And I think that's the same. I mean, with anyone who gets into like a line of work where you're where you want to help people it usually comes from a place of your own suffering which is right. ultimately a blessing right it, when you're in the the depths of the suffering it doesn't feel that way <laughs> but <laughs> afterwards you're like oh and that's why this podcast is here for because i want people to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel like there's no matter what you're going through in life there's always mm -hmm. a way out at some point and love is it can be that medicine to help you get there yeah. so when do you feel the most love? Honestly, like, I, I think all my answers are overlapping a little bit, mm -hmm. but I, I've noticed this a lot. And I think again, during COVID, because it's like, we're all just irritable and this is weird and we don't know what to do with it. Like, this is just such, this is nothing we've ever experienced before. So it's, I think a lot of us are more like on edge than we normally would be. At least I am. Yes. Um, but I notice that like when I am more on edge, like everything else is bothering me. Like I'm mm -hmm. 
this person's not doing enough. My, this person, like I've, I can nitpick at my boyfriend. I can nitpick at this person at a friend, at a situation, at an email I don't like, whatever it is. And it's like, no, I'm literally just in a bad mood today. And like, I got to fix myself. I have to do whatever I need to do to snap out of this mood. I mean, it's okay to be in a bad mood, but like, it's also a reminder, like you need to work on you. And when you're happy, like, and it's true when I'm happy and when I feel good and just like my energy is good and, and like I'm sleeping well and I'm like meditating or journaling or whatever I'm doing, like nothing bothers me or things bother me, but not as much, not as much. And like, I don't nitpick at things. I don't, I'm not as irritable. And I just think that like, it's a really big sign of like, are you really working on you and like how are you happy are you or are you at least trying to do things to put yourself first because if you're not everything's going to bother you because that's so easy it's easy to take the way you feel out on stupid things and the things are usually so stupid like an email is so stupid you know like there's so many stupid things that like it's so easy to react to but right. it's really coming from like you Absolutely. Because when you're empty and deprived, then you're kind of in that space of darkness and yeah, it, you get and easily that, triggered. Yeah. You're easily triggered. Yeah. yeah totally. Absolutely. So how do you feel you receive love? How do I feel I receive love? Um, Well, I will say that I do really like words of affirmation and I've always felt like I always like when people are giving me words of affirmation. And it's quite interesting though, I will say it's quite interesting because um, my boyfriend, words of affirmation isn't like his, and you know, I'm sure I'll know the love languages and whatever, but it's not like his strong suit we can mm -hmm. say. But, and there's times where you can have a conversation and you can tell someone like what makes you feel loved, what makes you feel appreciated and happy and whatever. But for me, it's so interesting because, you know, like in my past relationships, I was with someone who was like always giving words of affirmation and I was miserable. And wow. like with my new, I mean, it's not new anymore, but my boyfriend now, he's not that way. And like, I just have this inner feeling that like, you know, of like safety and, and happiness and love, but it's expressed in a different way. And while I do like words of affirmation, that does make me feel really good. <laughs> and it does all feel really good. Um, it's interesting how like, sometimes you need less of what you think you need right. from people when like you have, when they make you feel that way, just like as a person in, in other ways and like overall, you just know that this is such a genuine person who like really has your best interest in mind. And it's okay if they're not like every five seconds telling you you're amazing. Once in a while, sure, like I like to hear that, but like it's just interesting to see how also once you do, once you work on yourself and once you like know that you are worthy and competent and smart and all of these things and, and you've done the inside work and it's coming from within and you feel confident and happy and secure and there's obviously more work to do like we all have days some days i don't feel that way at all but you need less of it from other people right because your your cup is full absolutely mm -hmm. nice um <laughs> and the last question is how and how or where has love created a miracle in your life I was thinking about this one and um, I mean, I think as we said through, through the work that I do is, um, you know, it took a while, but learning to kind of surrender to the fact that, okay, I'm not feeling well. Um, and I think eventually coming to a place where I could see it in, in the lens of like, this is a, this is a blessing in disguise. Um, it brought me to doing this work. And I think also with my, with my boyfriend right now, like 
it took, it was really hard for me to get out of my old relationship. But I think that ultimately it took this like radical form of love for myself that I had to really radically accept the fact that I was so, this was so not, this was not, it was not good. It was not healthy. It wasn't safe. It wasn't nothing about it was serving me. And I, you know, I, as I said earlier, like I moved back to my parents' house and I just like did these hard things that at the time, like were really hard. Like a breakup is hard moving home is hard. All of these things are so hard, but it's all coming from a place of love for yourself where you're just like, I deserve better. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be with a man or a woman or whoever that like loves me. And if you can like really have like the confidence and the security and it's hard it's not easy and it can take a really long time to get out of something bad but if you can do that for yourself you will one day end up in a place where your life is just completely different for the better and I think that like it really did happen to me and and you know it's so interesting and I like talk about this with my friends a lot I met my boyfriend now who, when I was living, I was living at my parents' house in the suburbs an hour away from the city. And like, I moved home to work on my podcast. That's when I started it. And to just like, I was, I wasn't feeling well physically. I wanted to get out of Manhattan. I wanted to go home. I wanted to, you know, I quit my job. I wasn't making money and I moved home and I was not expecting to meet anyone. Like that was the last thing on my mind. I've been, in this crazy relationship for a few years and like I just needed to focus on me and I, and I that's when I met my boyfriend and the funny this is my favorite story to tell is when he was he was on dating apps and he literally would only put in like a one mile radius because he's like a man of convenience so he's like I only want like I will only date someone within like a certain he wouldn't even date someone that lives in Brooklyn and he lived in Manhattan, like, like wow. ridiculous. And then he met me and I'm like, oh, I live an hour away in Westchester, which is an hour north of the city. And, you know, I just think it's so funny the way that life works out. And like, I know it's so cliche, but when you're least expecting things to happen, they happen. And like, when you put yourself first and you do what, what you need, miracles happen. Like that is kind of like my story and really encourage people to always look inwards. So yes, that would be, that would be my piece of advice to really allow love to come into your life. Okay. So thank you so much. So how can people find you and join your movement and yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram. You can so my podcast is the Vhive, and you can follow the Vhive on Instagram at the Vhive T H E V H I V E, and you can follow me Hannah Matlock H A N N A H M A T L U C K, and you can listen to the Vhive wherever you get your podcast, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and. Um, we also have a website, thebeehive.com, where there's more information there and some membership things and bonus content. And um, soon there'll be some merchandise and that's it. Nice. Thank you so much. This was such a great conversation and so thank powerful. You. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you for having me and thank you for doing this work. And um, I'm excited. You're, you're gonna, we're going to set up a time for you to come on the Beehive awesome. and share story because I really I'm excited to learn more about you and your work and everything you do and um so we'll, when we get off I'm going to send you an email and we'll set that up and I can't wait nice thank you so much thank okay thank you sorry about the construction <laughs> it's New York it's okay I'm so sorry but thank you so much this was amazing you're welcome thank you bye bye thank you so much for listening Please subscribe and tune in on Tuesdays for new episodes. For more information about me, please follow me on Instagram at Corinne J. Camara and my website, CorinneCamara.com. Sending you lots of infinite love.